Kimse. Has to be marketable. Has to be merchantable. Have a look at the marketable title acts, which has actually been adapted in several ways in a lot of these states. And what happens, they, they do not lend themselves to an interpretation. And they might operate to provide a new foundation of titles based upon a stray accidental or interloping conveyance. So the objective of them is actually to provide for the recorded fee simple ownership and exemption from the burdens of the old conditions, which at each transfer of the property interferes with the marketability of it. What type of title do you have? So apparently you don't own your property. The way that you think you do. So most of the titles that You've been issued on these properties and they're taken from you in foreclosures. You never owned it anyways. You have a colorable title. And they take that away. I've been talking for an hour and 14 minutes, man. I'm going to stop for now. I'll open the room up real quick for a few questions, then I'm out of here. So what type of title do you have? You have colorable title? In order to get a loyal title in this day and age, brothers and sisters, you gotta get a land patent. There's nowhere around it. You gotta get a land patent. See, under this color title system, most is often in that. That that's in this country today. No, no people are really operating under a loyal titles. None of you have absolute or loyal title. And in order for you to really have a valid title, a true title, you got to have the loyal title. Or in order to really own something and not pay taxes, you have to have that loyal title. So these people know very well what they're doing. Because if you stop paying um, taxes, they're going to come and they're going to... They're going to foreclose on you because you have a colorable title. You don't have a loyal title. Or at best, you have Fee Simple, which actually came out of England under the king. And so today, the king is the state. And when you fail to uh, appease to the king by not paying your property taxes, the king comes in just like they did in common law in England, and they evict you off the property. And they put someone else on it's the same system, but they're using different diamonds and methods to deceive you to think that it's changed, but it's the same system. They brought that same system over from England right overhead, and they're foreclosing on people. Because no one has a loyal title. You have, you have colorable title. You have a certificate of title. But you don't have the actual title. Because if you did, there would be no taxes, because there would be no trust. Right now, they have a trust set up. And they have legal title. You have equitable title. And what I'm saying is not necessarily to fault the seller, but it's the fault of the legal system and the real estate system for allowing these diluted forms of titles to be in controlling areas where it is imperative to have absolute title. They're doing this on purpose and they know what they're doing. And they know people. most people are not educated on this. So in order to correct this problem, it's important to return to those documents that I mentioned, brothers and sisters. See, the early lenders of this nation created to properly ensure that property remained one of the unalienable, what they call it, inalienable rights 
that the newly established sovereign freeholders could actually rely on to always exist. What happened? They took it away from you right under your eyes. Decided not to learn contract law. They get you by ways of contracts. See, a complete title means that a person has a possession, the right of possession, and the right of the property. I got that out of case law, man. Dignity versus unpraxing. A perfect title is exactly the same as a complete title. That's Devon versus Pitcher. You, you guys can go and look up these case laws yourself. I'm not making them up. So it tells the dog, show me the law where I'm showing you the law. So, that's a complete title. And until we get this, we don't own anything. So in other words, a complete or perfect title is in react marketable or merchantable title. So my question to you, do you have a marketable or merchantable title? If not, you don't have a complete title and you don't own your property. What you have is represented by a colorable title. A good title does not necessarily mean one perfect uh, or is recorded perfect, right? but it consists of one which is actually both the right for owner and the right for possession of the property. You got to have a right to both. It means a title free from litigation. They can't take you in court and take your property because you didn't pay some property taxes. It's palpable defects. A good title means not merely a title that is valid. I don't mean that kind of good title. But it is a marketable title which can again be sold to a reasonable purchaser someone a purchaser or be mortgaged to a person once it could be for a security it's a security for a loan of money and a clear title means that there are no encumbrance on the land so when you're contracting to convey land the use of the phrase good and clear title surprises since the term good title and clear title are not synonymous. Those are not the same. See, it's called a phase. You gotta overcome this aphasia. Good title and clear title is not synonymous. So the word good title and clear titles, just like the words complete title and perfect title. It describes nothing more than marketable title or merchantable title, as I previously stated. And it almost always represent in a transaction by color title. And none of these types of titles purport to be the absolute or the allodial title. And none of them are the type of title. None of them. But it's what you get. Is that what you want? I don't know. But it's what you got. Oh, these type of titles are always represented by a color title. It's not the actual of all your title. heavy folks so this new category of titles are really bad titles they're defective they're imperfect or they're doubtful a bad title conveys no property to the purchaser or the estate that's a case law right there Heller versus Cohen a title is defective when the party eliminating 
or when the party claiming to own the land has not the whole title. You don't have the whole title. You only have equitable title. That's a bad title. But some other person has title to part or portion of the land. The government has it. The state has it. They have legal title. Such as a title, as there's no title whatsoever. That's place versus the people. So you don't have titles. They tell you you have a certificate title, but you don't. See, an imperfect title is a title where something remains to be done by those granting the powers to pass the title on. Check it out for yourself. Rachel versus um, Perez, case law. Rochelle versus Perez. These are bad titles, folks, that you have. Ellen versus Kahan. Every title is described as doubtful, which invites or exposes the party holding it to litigation. So if they can take you to court for it, you don't own it. It's a bad title. Do you understand? And brothers and sisters, every single one of these titles that I describe are bad titles. And the true title can never be conveyed because they don't have the true title. They have a color title, just like color of law. But in some of these uh, situations, the color title I actually used as an operative instrument. So what makes their color um, a title complete? Good or clear in one situation and then in another situation, that same color title can be described as bad or defective, imperfect, doubtful. You have a t- color title? You don't own anything. And guess what? You'll be one of those people standing online in Walmart because you got so old you couldn't work anymore. You developed a bad heart. And you don't have $2 million in your savings after you hit 65 to live off for the remainder of your life. Because even if they tell you you pay your house off, you're going to be paying property taxes. For the remainder of your lives, man. Because you don't have the allodial title. Right? You don't have the allodial title. So, they're going to foreclose on you. Either you go to Walmart and you stand up on a cane with an ear pump on. Because you're so old, you eat a lot of bad food. You eat pork. You eat a lot of beef. That was injected with things. And, um, you, when you're 65, you're like you're 95. Parasites growing out of your skin. You got holes in your face. Oh, you lived it up when you were a little younger. But um, as you started to age, you started aging one year, you, you age three years at a time. So, I mean, <laughs> you start the little oldest, I don't know what. Shout out to Regina for the donation, man. <laughs> Damn, I should have listened to Tazza Talk. I should have listened to Tazza Talk. You got an ear pump on, talking. Walking, you, you, you as a greeter in the store, man. You want to be home watching Netflix, but you can't. You'll lose the home. Because you why? Because you got a color title. You don't have the actual title. So whenever the king wants to come in, just like the king of England, see, to, now in today's society, the king of England is the state. They bought they bought the same ain't common law England system over here. And they just refer to it by different names and means. They call it the state. That's the sovereign over here. They're not allowing you to be um sovereign. <laughs> Why? Wow. That's sad, man. Thumbs up, man. Thumbs up, man. So, that's what it is, man. The only way around it, see, is to get the land pat. And they try to make that impossible. You get the land pat, and you could, because there's no longer a trust set up. 
So if I ask my attorney tomorrow, I want you to give me an alodal title for this property I'm buying this week. What you think he's going to respond to me with? Well, he works for the system. He'll probably say he can't do that. You say ask him why. I was just going to say the same thing. That's you're dealing with a colorable title, and therefore they can only deal with it with colorable law. You have to bring them out of the colorable law by doing this stuff yourself. You have to know the connections. I dropped a link to the BLM so you can search up any record. I yield. Uh, yeah, see, man, you can't take a case to the criminal. You got to take a criminal to court. He's a part of the global system. Mm, he's practicing so global law. So basically, he's just going to act like he don't even know what I'm talking about. He probably doesn't. See, that's what a lot of people don't believe, man. Most of these attorneys are not educated in law. They know procedure. Only these high-level um, rogues are educated in law, man. They have to be in this a long time. They don't know law straight out of law school, man. They just know procedure. Yeah. And, and so the, the, the typical um, people that don't study law, when you tell them that, they are this guy crazy. Come on, what do you mean, man? The attorney's been in law school. Yeah, and a lot, look at all these people that got PhDs, man. An attorney that's only been to law school for two years would jack them all the way up. Because they don't know the law. It's two different things. It's a yep. messy system, man. So basically, nobody out here owns their homes unless they have them. Yeah. Titles. Unless they have the alonial titles. And in the 1930s, when they started all this nonsense, they took that away from us. If you look back, man, if you look at the um, your great-grandparents and all, they didn't have no property taxes, man. They literally owned that stuff. That's why they was living in it until it almost fell completely apart. And someone would come on their land that's sure for someone, they were going to get their shotgun. Because you're coming on, this is my, that was literally my land. They said, get off of my land. They owned that land. Uh, totally. They had the allodial title. Because you didn't have to work forever then. But then the new system came in. Oh, yeah, we want to build a railroad track right here. We're going to pay you to move over there. That's why some people didn't want to move, man. They literally own that land. Welcome to the new world. The 1930s. That's why Roosevelt names up on everything. I've never been to a city, man, where I didn't see something named after Roosevelt. I'm talking about Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He done it big, man. He done a big one, buddy. All over New York, every city, man, there's something known that named after Roosevelt. 1933, man, Gold's Confiscation. They honor him. And everybody that tried to fix it after him was taken out. Kennedy wanted to bring back the gold standard. He eliminated him. So did Lincoln. He eliminated him way back. Lincoln wanted to bring the, bring the greenbacks back, which was backed by gold. They thought he got assassinated for trying to free blacks. You know, you try to bring the gold standard back. Took him out. Kennedy was trying to do the same thing. Took him out. Some people that love this system, I was walking, man. Because they have a standard of living so high above others. There's enough here for everyone, man, if people wasn't that greedy. They create these things that, hey, oh, we're going to die of starvation. There's too many people. It's not, we're not going to have enough food to feed them. Nonsense, man. Got to keep the people in a panic mode. So, see, you really believe that the attorney will tell you how to get the allodial title? They're trying to make it almost impossible to get. We'll find out tomorrow. I got a, um, the title should be coming back either tomorrow or, or Tuesday. It's been on the contract since not this past Tuesday, but the previous Tuesday. And it should be back either tomorrow or Tuesday. So I'm going to ask them via email. Can they give me some, can they give me any information on how to obtain an allodial title? Because every time I purchase a house, I usually request that I get my title via general warning. 
as opposed to a limited warranty deed. After hearing you say all this, that stuff don't even matter no more. Don't matter, man. Those are all colorable titles. So, I'm going to ask them tomorrow, because we're supposed to close Friday on the 28th or 9th, whatever that is. I'm going to ask them tomorrow and see what their response is. It's usually the paralegal that you're dealing with initially. She'll go to the attorney and she'll let me know what he or she says. So, you know, I'll, I'll be able to see what they say. They're going to look at you different, differently after that. I tell you this, man. It's kind of like a car, right? The manufacturer's statement of origin still exists for cars, right? But the states has actually been trained. As soon as someone go and buy a car, the state is told to send the manufacturer, I mean, that the seller is told to send the manufacturer's statement of origin over to the state. And, and so the state owns that car. Then if you pay that car off, you ever wonder why? If you pay off for the bank that you allegedly got the loan from, that the bank would tell y'all, well, you can get that um, title from the DMV because it's over at the state. The state has it, and they're not giving you the manufacturer statement of origin, which is would be equivalent to an allodial title on a home. They're going to give you a certificate of title, which is a colorable title. So that means you got to pay taxes, so you don't own it. Because if they gave you the manufacturer's statement of origin, there is no trust. It would be yeah. just you. You will own yeah. that all right. Yeah, if you look at your uh, certificate of title for an automobile, um, you'll find that there are assignments and security interests on the title. And if you are selling a vehicle to somebody else, you're supposed to make an assignment for that security interest. If you are not qualified as a trustee to make that assignment, then you can't make that assignment. It's a colorable title. And so, pay taxes on it. This is why they don't want this kind of information out there, man. Can you imagine if everyone woke up to this? Everyone's never going to wake up. Just enough people, man. See, if everybody wake up, it's still, you can know the law about how to enforce it. That's the thing. Well, if they want to wake up, they won't be able to get away with it anymore. Man. There's only a small faction of people running this, man. And let me tell you, man, when you're dealing with commerce, man, there is no color. It's debtors and there's creditors. That's it. You see what I'm right. saying? So they, they don't deal with color, man, in commerce. That's just a facade to make people think it's that way. But there's debtors. And there's creditors. And there's one clique of people that want to have a certain standard of living at the expense of all the debtors. Can I uh, share my screen, brother? Yeah, go ahead. Gotta find the right one here. Um, here we go. Okay, everybody can see my screen, I hope. No, I can see it. It's a, oh, yeah, 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 I can see it. Uh, hold on. Okay, 26 uh, yeah, U.S. Code, 6201, Assessment Authority. Authority of the Secretary. The Secretary is authorized and required to make the inquiries, determinations, and assessments of all taxes, including interest, additional amounts, additions to the tax, and assessable penalties imposed by this title, accruing under any former internal revenue law, which have been duly paid by stamp. Wow. We are not paying in the right way, I assure you. The sharing, or the, the payment of of uh, taxes is made by stamps and not by Federal Reserve notes. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, um, Barbara in the room says, so I know I own my car. If you own your car, um, Barbara, don't pay taxes on it. See what happens. Don't pay property taxes. That's now, if right. I own something, no one could ever come and take something from me, right, if I own it. Um, I mean, think about that. The, the system that they have set up, you will never be able to rest comfortably, man. You will always have to work unless you have millions saved up. See, this is why you see a lot of people in their older age as a greeter in Walmart. Those people's retired, 
when they couldn't survive off their retirement because of this new system that they put in place. This is really a dangerous system, man. And people won't realize it until they're too old. I thought I was going to be able to enjoy retirement, but they got to come back out and work. And, uh, you know, I was being a little comical, but you see some of those people, they have air tanks on, trying to breathe, and they're still making them stand up at Walmart because they don't want to lose their home that they've probably been in 50 years. Not to mention they got life insurance on all them people. Yeah. Yes, but you're right, about, you're right about that because yeah, I, 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 yeah, I got a piece of land down. Yes, I got a piece of land down in Winter Haven, Florida, and it's a sixty-two hundred square foot piece of land that I've owned for the last three years. I'm thinking I own it, I, and I haven't paid the taxes. I bought it at a tax deed auction at eighteen for, for three thousand dollars, but thirty-five hundred dollars. I get a letter. Now I intentionally didn't pay the taxes last year. I paid thirty-five hundred dollars for this piece of land. The first year the taxes is ninety dollars. The second year the taxes is seven hundred dollars. So I call a county assessor. I'm like, yo, I paid $3,500 for this ta- for this property. Why is the taxes seven, dollars $800 this year? And so they had to go back out there and reassess and do something. And then this year it came back around. The taxes was back down to $70 or $80. But what happened was I never paid the pre- prior year. So they had sent the prior property was going to go back to auction again. Now, mind uh, you, I don't have a mortgage on this property, but they still <laughs> going to take it. I ended up paying the taxes, long story short. Yeah, man. You, you know what? You know what you got to do, to see? You got to put it in a trust, man. You can't be the owner of it. You got to put that stuff in a trust. See, that's a problem. We want to own things. Well, it's you not in my name. It's, it's in the LLC, but I'm... It doesn't matter, man. That, that LLC is registered. So that's still in the system. They can seize that, man. Mm. That's not the same as a private trust. I don't even do private trust. I do a private foundation, private non-operating foundation. Hmm. The, the foundation of the, the, the trust that's already in existence. And if you haven't recognized the expression of that trust already, then you're the one that's failed. You're the one that's become subject to that colorable law. And that's, that's all that public education system indoctrination. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States. All right. <laughs> Yeah. They don't say that anymore, do they? Isn't that outlawed and said in schools now? Yeah. They, they took, they took, nah, they took it out. They took it out schools also. That went away with the most high. Yeah. Wow. What next? And what you got to know your value? What you got? Know your value. be on the job. Know your value, you there? Yes, see, um, looks like you be um, getting involved in a lot of land and, you know, property. Yeah, yeah, yeah man, last year, man. privatizing this stuff, man. That's the only thing I'm doing wrong is privatizing it. I haven't privatized it yet. Um, and that's the issue. But, you know, the trust is probably, I've been looking into the trust for the last four years and they're so complex, actually since 17, so the last five years. And they're so complex and I haven't put the time in enough to where, and I've even paid someone $2,500 to for 10 hours of consultation to help me form a trust. And she did a great job. But the thing about it is, once you get finished with all of that consultation, you still have to put the action together. You still got to go out and get two trustees. You still have to go get an executive. You still have to go get an executive manager. You still got to go get a secretary, a treasury, a trust protector, and all this other stuff. I mean, you got to get so many different parts. It's like it's all it's it's crazy. But what kind of trust was that she was setting up? What's that? What type of trust was that that she was setting up? It was private. She wasn't setting it up. She was directing me. She um. It was it was a private trust. It's not it's not recorded in in, in any place. Hey, right, um, so so why why is she um saying you need all those um those entities there? No, she's what she's saying is you need two trustees. You need um a, the one of the trustees has to be at arm's length, so they can't be blood related. Um, you have to have an executive secretary. You have to have a trustee. You have to have a trust protector. 
You have to have several other pieces in place just so, you know, everything can run accordingly. And you, not to mention all of this, you got to have the funds to be able to fund this. You know, and everybody has to be on the same. She's talking about trust capital units, trust certificates. I mean, it's, it's, it's complex. And, you know, that's the main reason why I haven't transferred these properties into private. I even hold no. Yeah, you know what? Um, it seems like she's incorporating a little of that, man. Totally exactly. exactly. I was just going to say she's leading yeah. you right into all the colorable documents, yeah. brother. And it's all colorable. Uh, that, that lady, she's going to put you right back in the system. You're going to think those assets were protected and they're going to come and seize them. Yeah, because I've got uh, a trust. that's not irrevocable, they're coming for you. Coming for yeah, you. I've got a trust and it's called an express trust. You want to see it? You talk to me about it because it's not placed in any documentation. Hallelujah. I heard that. And see, you pay that amount of money, man. You say 25 huh? It was actually more than that. I had to pay an additional for some more hours because I was. I don't know. <laughs> but it was wow. around two out of three. It was around almost three. I mean, it was look, look, it was very valuable. I ain't even gonna front. Yeah, but I mean, if it was very valuable, why don't you have it done? Because it's about me at this point. It's about me putting it together. Every I gotta put. It's my responsibility to put together. She can only teach me everything you're doing right now. It's something.